These are the plaintiffs, Aaron May and Dawn Brewer. They say the defendant is their current landlord, and they're in a huge feud, and they're turning to this court for help in recovering the money owed to them. The defendant has stolen their electricity, the kitchen sink leaks, and they're tired of hearing drip, drip, drip all night. They're here seeking a rent rebate of $3,000 and are suing for just that today. This is the defendant, Lauren. She says yes, there was a very small leak in the kitchen sink, but it was fully functional while she worked on getting it repaired. These plaintiffs were nitpickers from the day they arrived, complaining the air filters in the units weren't thick enough. And even though air filters are the tenant's responsibility, she changed them out of her own expense. Well, nice gals finish last, because nothing she does makes the plaintiffs happy. Oh, them? No way. She's accused teeing off a tenant. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $8,000 for all she's out. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiff says help because her landlord is in a big feud with her. But the and the plaintiff says the landlord is stealing her stuff. Yeah, but the, the defendant says the, the plaintiff is a real complainer and nothing makes her happy. It's the case of Rotten Roommates. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. All right, Ms. May and Ms. Brewer, you had rented an apartment from the defendant uh, from when to when? From November 5th, 2019 to January 31st, 2020. Now, it was supposed to be a year-long lease, but um, all kinds of problems happened that we're about to talk about, and so that's why you ended up moving out in January. What was the problem that first surfaced that caused the bad blood? The first problem was the kitchen. We discovered that the kitchen had a huge leak in the wall, and the defendant had a leak expert or a leak detector come out and they told us that they had to rip out the entire kitchen wall and that we should not use the kitchen or use it as little as possible. So on that first problem, um, you know, stuff happens, leaks happen. So were they willing to fix it? Um, because she said she was going to uh, have it my, fixed. But you guys didn't want it fixed during the holidays. You didn't want construction going on during the holidays, which is understandable, right? It was Christmas, yes. So yeah. um, the agreement was to have it fixed right after Christmas, okay. but nothing ever happened. Well, um, by then she was we, telling we you guys her. you needed to move out because other stuff happened. Correct. So Correct. You, fi you folks end up, who's who here, by the way? Who's May? I'm Erin. You're May okay. and you're Brewing. Oh, okay. I'm done. Okay, so now um, somehow you guys end up finding out that the washer and dryer, which is a common area used by how many other tenants? There were three in the back and two next door. Is apparently on your electric bill. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, did you know that, Ms. Lauren, that, um, that it wasn't on its own separate meter? No, I didn't know that. I had purchased the unit in middle of November. So I didn't actually even um, lease them. It was the company that owned the unit before I did that had made a lease out to them. And I did not know that there was a... Uh, that, there, that it was on the same meter. Has that been fixed or not yet? It would be a few thousand dollars to fix and I was going to do it, but then the next, the next person that came in, we decided that she would get all the quarters from the, all the change from the um, wash, washing, from the dryer and that I would get- Because they're coin operated. The washing okay. Machine. So no, it has not been fixed, but it's just- But you worked out a deal. Out. Yes. Okay. Exactly. All right. So you guys find that out and there's no, there was no deal worked out. You all of a sudden you find it out. Apparently you're the ones, Ms. May and Ms. Brewer, who tell her about it. What was her reaction when Correct. you told Correct. her about it? Well, she originally said she was going to go down to the city and we were going to work things out. And then she tried, said that she was going to reimburse me $25 only when I did a little investigation with the city and because the electric bill was in my name. <clears throat> and I asked them to show me proof of like what was electric was being used before we turned it into our name when it was under their original real estate agent's name. And how much was that? So from the short period of time from October 28, 2019 to November 7th, 2019, the electric bill was 3140 just for the electric, not including the water. The total bill was 6953. This was accumulated when the apartment was empty with no tenants. That's why I was trying okay. to work something out with her 
um, during that time to go to the city. We were going to try to figure something out. Um, but that never happened. So right. you're, you want to work it out. She wants to work it out, but you don't come to an agreement. So what do you end up doing? Originally, this argument started over trying to add my sister to the lease. Um, oh. I did tell her that I would shut the breaker off because I'm paying the electric. Uh, but I never did shut the breaker off because the breaker was in my kitchen. Well, did you also tell that to the other tenants? No, ma'am. Ms. Lauren, you have a series of texts between you and the other tenants where they try to use the washer and dryer. And what did they say? They said that they were not being allowed to use it and that these two women had blocked the uh, had blocked the washing machine and dryer. And then they also said that they had tried to charge rent or they had tried to charge to use the washing machine and dryer and they had taped over those little uh the quarter where you put the quarters in and they had taped that and um they basically they also told the other tenant that they could shut off the uh the power in the other tenant's kitchen if they wanted to but they weren't going to do that okay now how did they um sure. you i can't remember the phrase you used but how did you say they blocked it off how what did they do uh they well, I was told by the other tenant that they taped the uh, the quarters and that they literally physically uh, would not let her because tape the slots, unit. not the quarters. They tape the slots where the quarters the enter. Slots. All right. Yeah. Whose idea is it for you guys to move out? Is it your idea or her idea or what happened? It was the defendant's idea. So things got a little nasty between you guys, didn't they? Because I've read the texts back and forth. You call her an yes, idiot. You tell her she's stupid. Um, you're telling the other tenants that you could if you wanted to, but you won't, but I could turn off your breakers. Uh, you, you tape the coin slots and, um, and don't let other people use I mean, I understand your frustration. Why should you have to pay it? They're right. You have no business having a rental place that has the, uh, the communal washer dryer. You need to spend the dough and separate the meter. You've got to do it. If you don't feel like doing it, then you do what you did, which is you have to come up with an agreement, but the other side has to agree with you. So, you know, what we have here is a problem where I see your side, but I see their side too. I don't see how you handled it because you don't get to deprive other tenants of using the washer and dryer. That was crazy. Um, you know, what your right is to do is withhold some rent to compensate for it. That's what any other tenant would have done. They would have just let the other tenants use it and then the next time when their rent was due, pay less or something. So now let's talk about what you're suing for. You're suing for December and you're suing for the security deposit, correct? Yes, ma'am. You lived there in January, but did you pay rent or is that your last month's rent that you had paid that in advance? Last the month. last month's that was a lot. Oh, okay. Is that accurate? All right. Everybody's on the same yeah. page. I got it. All right. So, but you feel that you should be recompensed for December rent. I don't know why you picked December and not January, but anyway, recompense for December rent, just December because of the leak. Um, it, 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 because it, it, according to you, it was uninhabitable, it, right? except for that the idea of not fixing the leak was yours because it was Christmas. So well, I'm, I'm not sure how she would owe you that. Allow me to explain that. Um, the last month would have been November of next year, which is what she refunded. And January was the last month that we actually stayed in the apartment. And that was when we went almost half a month with no hot water and one unworking toilet and a broken kitchen. Well, now, so according to you, when they send you a text saying we don't have hot water, you send a plumber over there, correct, Ms. Lauren? Yes, I did. I and the plumber says there's the nothing wrong with the hot water. Aaron was there and we all went in and he turned on the faucet in the kitchen. He ran it for a while. Then we went to the first, there was hot water. Then he ran it to the bathroom. There was hot water. Then he ran it to the other bathroom and there was hot water. And then they kept texting, oh, we don't have hot water. But she was there. She so you think the they were setting up, you think they were setting up a lawsuit is what you think. Yes, because I by do. then I think that you had already told them about... you're out. You had already, so when did you hire a lawyer to file a, a notice of eviction or a seven day to cure or whatever it is that you ended up filing? I served them the cease and desist, I believe on the third. Of what, January. January? All right. Ms. Lauren, are you a new landlord? Like, is this the first building yes, you've owned? Yes, it's the first time I've owned a property, yes. Okay. Um, there was a $1,500 deposit. There's no dispute about that, right? Yes. 
Okay. And you did not return the $1,500. Why? Well, uh, because I had to pay for my lawyer to write up that. I also had paid my lawyer to write something else up for them. And then also I had cleaning. There were cleaning charges to do. Also, I had to get my, my lawyer to respond to some uh, bogus complaint that they had filed with the Department of Agriculture and agriculture uh, and something which else. happens to monitor the rentals. But here's the thing, okay? The court has asked you to submit any proof you have of the amount that you're asking for. You have picked the figure six hundred dollars in legal fees. I see where for a full eviction he was going to charge. He is it a he or she? It's a it's a guy. It's okay, a he. where he was going to charge you fifteen hundred for the full eviction, but. All he ended up doing was one letter, which is on a form. What did he charge you for that? Or how did he break it down? Or he didn't break it down? Because at that point, you were frustrated. And I think your exact answer was, my time costs money to be chasing all this information. That's fine. But that's your counterclaim. And if you don't take the time to figure out what he is actually going to charge you for that one letter and prove to me that you paid it, you are, how are you going to prove to me that $600 is the amount that you're entitled to? How are you doing that? Uh, during that time, I texted him and I called him. And every time I text and call him, he charges time because he's a lawyer. Um, and right, uh, you know how those lawyers are, by golly. Anyway, you might need to get another lawyer. All right, but um, I'm just telling you, you need to educate yourself on what Florida statutes say. There's just one statute with a lot of parts. If in fact you can prove to me that they left damages behind, that they left the place filthy, that you had to do X, Y, Z because of them. All right, then you can keep for those damages. But let's talk about what your counterclaim is against them. Your counterclaim, according to you, is eight thousand something dollars. You want the three thousand dollars for the break a lease penalty, but you're the one who told them you gotta go. Well, I did right? actually. Okay, uh... that's a rhetorical question. The professional cleaning of a hundred dollars, <laughs> according to you, they left the place a shambles. Do you have any pictures that show that it was so dirty it had to be professionally cleaned? I know that you did professionally clean it for the new tenant, but yeah. Oh, I know that you did. You have a statement from who? The tenant. It's a statement about how dirty the place was, and I also had cleaned right, the kitchen. Right, but I got. See, she they came. have an obligation. A, a a tenant has an obligation to leave it in broom swept condition. I see the pictures that they offered. As a landlord, anytime any tenant leaves, you need to take your telephone out of your uh, out of your pocket and take pictures and video of anything that's a complaint, because you're going to have to prove to a court of law that they left it in a in a subpar fashion. But you have zero pictures, so that's a problem. You're also suing for harassment, a thousand dollars for the tampering with the electric box, and even though you're suing for three thousand for breaking the lease. Penalty, you got another two thousand for breach of contract. It sounds to me like these women made you crazy. Welcome back to the People's Court. Who's in the wrong and who will prevail? Let's find out. Let's go back into the courtroom. They reported me to two different agencies for false claims about the hot water. I've never had any problems with the hot water. The tenant, nobody. There have been no problems with the hot water. No one has said anything about the hot water, and I have not got the hot water fixed. That was just something they came up with because. They felt like it. Then they reported me to the agricultural department. Then they also reported me to the Lake Worth department. And I asked how how I had gotten this citation. And the the man from Lake Worth uh, told me that they had reported me saying that um, that I had been threatening to turn off the electric, which is exactly what these two women had been doing. Yes, I had Did you that. You report in her for and, threatening to turn no, off the electric. No. no, and it's an email. He put it in writing that you guys had claimed that I was threatening to turn off the electricity. Give me a moment. That is exactly what the inspector says, that, wow. uh, yes. that whoever that filed yesterday. the complaint fi filed it saying that you claimed that the landlord was attempting to turn the power off. I guess I got it. I, I'm confused, I guess. Um, mm. I. I so what do we have? We have you asking for $1,500, all of your rent back for December because it was inconvenient for you to live in a place with a leak. The only reason that the repair didn't take place at that moment is because, understandably, you didn't want construction going on during the holidays. You're not going to get December rent back. Regarding the security deposit, I see the nastiness and I know that it made you nuts and stuff, but, and I see that they're filing complaints, but that's their right. If the complaint isn't well-founded, then too bad. 
So let's talk about what in your counterclaim is a reason to keep a security deposit. Let's go through the things you are saying. You should get some legal fees, but not the amount that you made up out of whole cloth because it's just one letter. You don't have any pictures to prove that they left the place messy. I have an email. And in fact, their pictures tenant. show the opposite. I don't care. I want proof, okay. not somebody else says it was really dirty. That's not proof. And you have a lot to learn about being a landlord. Unfortunately, this really was trial under fire because they were really bad tenants to you. They were mad yeah. and they reacted very, very poorly. And th this is pretty much the nightmare tenant for a landlord because they felt you were treating them poorly. So they then took out cannons and shot cannons at you because you threw a spitball at them. It is very obvious to me that you guys have been down this road before and you know what you're doing. On the other hand, what you don't know about being a landlord could fill a library. And you need to educate yourself. And unfortunately for you, you mess with the wrong people because these people bring a gun to a knife fight, okay? So that's what ended up happening. But that doesn't mean you get to keep their security deposit. And that doesn't mean you get to get rent back just because you didn't feel like having that. You guys are out of your minds. This isn't the way it works. As for getting December back, absolutely not for the reasons I've explained. As for your getting your security deposit back, the only thing that I am going to allow you to keep, because I do think that you went through a lot and you ended up having to hire a lawyer because of things that were happening that I don't agree with, all right, is I'm going to allow you to keep 250 of it and I'm gonna order you to pay the plaintiffs the remainder of their security deposit back, $1,250 net judgment in favor of the plaintiff. Well, what a case. The plaintiffs are gonna get only $1,250 back, not the $3,000 they wanted. Let's find out how she feels about this. Lauren, let me ask you, uh, this has really been a trial under fire for you. What's your reaction to what just happened? I think only some of the evidence was presented and I think it was pretty ridiculous. Um, but that's okay, uh, everything's fine and we move on. Okay, well, you've learned a lot from this, no question about that. The, uh, the plaintiffs, let's talk to them now, Ms. May, Ms. Brewer. You didn't get what you were seeking, but boy, the judge says you 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 fight a knife fight with guns. You you you're tough ladies. You know we, you we may have a lot of things to learn as being a tenant. You know, but uh, she's not our first slumlord. This is true. Well, the judge said you've done this before. She kind of felt that way. Is that right? Indeed. Welcome Indeed. to Lake Worth. Holy mackerel. Okay, well, that's it. I hope you're satisfied. 1250 you get not 3000 And that'll wrap it up for this really intriguing case. A lot to learn about, about renting. Let's find out now and join the, uh, the judges for another session of After the Verdict. Here is Judge Millian and her husband, John, who is in real life, also a judge. Here they are. You had a confrontation here between some kind of, it was a lot of, it was pretty abrasive, the relationship. And I have to say, you've got a new landlord here. But honestly, I think These if are not they new were tenants. my tenants, they, they are were, not new tenants. The they have been around and the block. If, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of time to go into it um, in the middle of the trial. But it, you know, there were inches and inches of text. Right. And, and a email. new landlord doesn't realize just how sacrosanct a security deposit is. I mean, the rules are very narrow. Very for... And here's the thing: anybody within the sound of my voice who is either a landlord or a tenant, anywhere. Find out what the law is in your state. There's a beginning, middle, and end. It'll be, right. you know, 20 pages, 30 pages, whatever right. it is. Print it out, read it, make right. it your, your, your business to read it because right. you should know your rights as a tenant and Absolutely. you should know your rights as a, your obbligations as a right. landlord. And once you get, once you go through it one time, it's not that complicated. You don't have to go to MIT. No, and, to it, and now, it out. It, you know, it's not, you know, they don't have to go to a library. They can go to the internet. That's all right. right. And it's all digested <laughs> for you by all the law firms who want your business, you know? Absolutely. Right. So we got this question from Joseph from Philly. How does a homeowner need to secure firearms before taking in renters? There are no specific laws about this, but common sense should dictate that if you have firearms, you got to put them in a case and you got to lock the case, especially if you're renting to people with children. That is just a must because everything is going to be determined by whether you committed negligence. And the safest thing always is to lock the firearms up to make sure renters can't get to them.